Welcome to episode number 75 of Simplifying Lives with me, Shashank Nigam, and Laird Robin Speckelin joining us from Singapore. Robin, how are you doing? Good morning from Singapore. Um, just a bit of background, Robin has been a mentor to me for many years since uh, Simplifying was just a thought. Uh, and he is also a globally renowned strategy implementation expert. Now, Robin, we've all heard of strategy consulting. What is strategy implementation for those who are not aware? Thank you, Shoshang, and it's a pleasure to join you. So, for the last many years in business, the focus has been predominantly about crafting a strategy. Mm -hmm. But in the last 10, 15 years, the spotlight has focused much more on how we then implement that strategy. And the realization has been that customers notice your implementation, not your strategy. So whatever industry you're in, it's the impact of how well you implement the plans, the thoughts, the thinking that then translate into the organization that impact the customer. And that's where we focus. Okay, um, to make this more concrete, are you able to give me an example, let's say an airline, because that's what I talk about, that does strategy implementation well? So as you're well aware, just a couple of months ago, I published my new book, Excellence and Execution, How to Make Your Strategy Come Alive, where I focus on the how to, to make it happen. And as part of my research over the three years I spent putting the book together, based out of Singapore, the example that I researched was Singapore Airlines. Right. And very kindly, well, they were one of my first clients when I started the company back in 2000. Mm -hmm. And I went back in to visit them a couple of years ago and then wrote up for the book. Under the area of culture, I used Singapore Airlines for building a culture of excellence. So okay. first of all, in implementation, culture is critical because culture drives the way that an organization implements. So, for example, you look at Singapore Airlines as opposed to one of the other ones, it's the culture within that airline that differentiates them. Why is SIA different to Southwest, for example? Mm -hmm. So, when I was talking about how you then develop a culture of excellence, I picked up five key points that came from the discussion. What and the five were, the first one was, pay attention to the detail. And in Singapore, as many of us know, or all of us know, that they're meticulous about paying attention to what's going on. And in implementation, it's the same. It's all about the detail. Right. So we know in Singapore Airlines, that, for example, they, today, when they look at their attention for detail, when you board the, fl the plane, everything's in place, everything is set, everything is standardized. Mm -hmm. From when they first started flying, when they noticed the cabin crew's hair had to be put up, but different cabin crew put it different places, to standardizing the exact way that the hair is put up to wow. the, the design of the Singapore girl. The second thing, that we then picked up about building a culture of excellence is reinforcing the right behaviors. Okay. When you launch a new strategy, people get confused. What's important? What's no longer important? And you have to keep reinforcing what needs to be done. What are the right behaviors and actions? So we looked in SIA and we discovered what they focus on, for example, they have their onboard assessment right. where they hold the cabin crew responsible for the grooming. Inside their annual appraisal, 10% of their appraisal is based on customer feedback. Mm -hmm. So when you know you're going to be held responsible for something, it increases the spotlight on it and thus the improvement. Right. The third area we picked up on was, and this is one that just isn't done enough in implementation, is holding people accountable. 
So in Singapore Airlines, they hold their staff responsible for customer feedback, for customer comments, and they encourage it throughout the organization. And having people accountable for the implementation, easy to, takes a discipline. It takes a discipline to follow up and follow through. Right. The fourth area, the penultimate one, is transparency. Okay. Which over the last few years have grown more and more in importance. Mm -hmm. In an economic uh, economy intelligence unit report, they said that the top organizations are clearly more transparent. And Singapore Airlines go along with that as well. They encourage their staff to submit reports. In some organizations, when something goes wrong, people hide it. Right. In Singapore Airlines, it's encouraged to report, to submit reports. Mm -hmm. They have their onboard issues. And at the end of a flight, the senior cabin crew will re are encouraged to report. Why? Not to point the finger like in many organizations and blame, but in their culture of excellence, it's there to help improve. Mm -hmm. And this is culture of constant improvement. Right. And the final area, which is one that has been part of the uh, the DNA airlines for many years is never settle. Okay. If you're going to build a culture of excellence, it's not just for a few years. It's about constantly challenging yourself, improving, making the difference, Shawshank. And the lovely example that uh, they shared with me just recently, how they never settled, was they used to have, as you well know, the longest flight between New York and Singapore. Yep, I've taken it a couple of times. Which was stopped a few years ago. Well, next year, they're reintroducing it because mm -hmm. they kept looking at how they could bring it back. And now with the A350, they're able to do it at a cost that is now working for them. Mm -hmm. So next year, they start again on the 350. Right. But also, the, love, the other example, how they've never settled, is they're constantly changing their strategic intent. Right. So their focus over the years has been on the, be the youngest air fleet to building a whole experience before customer experience became the in thing, to having um, fax machines. They were the first airline back in those days with fax machines. Today, looking at their back end processes and how they can soar. So right. they constantly challenge themselves internally. Right. And what we've seen in companies who are excellence in execution is these five characteristics are true across the companies. That's very interesting. You mentioned how they can soar because uh, in, in my book, Soar, I, I do have a full chapter on Singapore Airlines and the Singapore Girl on exactly how they pay attention to detail to the making of the Singapore girl. And you know, you mentioned in particular how the hair is done. You know, indeed, uh, it's not a simple thing to just come up with a strategy and expect it to be implemented correctly. And you know, it's, it's an unwritten rule, like you mentioned, that culture needs to be right. Singapore Airlines has a strong culture. Southwest has a strong culture. Kulula in South Africa has a strong culture. And these are airlines that indeed implement well over time. Um, and also, just, you know, just it, it's in the detail. I mean, you mentioned again the hair, but, you know, like today, they now have specific length of the eye enhance, enhancement eyelashes. Wow. So they recently updated to keep it fresh within themselves. Or the other example they shared that I love is how the, the staff are trained exactly how to place the glass with the logo in yes. front of the customer. Yes. Why yes. have the logo on the glass if the customer doesn't see it? Yep. So it's that attention to detail and the concern for the consumer that has made them such a culture of excellence. Absolutely. It's, it's fantastic. Now, what would be your one big tip to an airline that you know, wants to excel in implementation and not just talk big ideas, but may not necessarily have the resources or the culture, which takes a long time to build, of Singapore Airlines? Um, Shaojang, it's a great question. 
And the, the one biggest tip I would share is discipline. Mm -hmm. So for over 17 years now, I've been running Bridges, my company. And what we've noticed is the discipline it takes. And one of the examples in today's turbulent economies where we're working faster than any other time in history. So for example, we've currently knocked 50 years off the average life of a company. So in the 1950s, the average was 67 years. Mm -hmm. Today, it's just 17 years. Wow. So we're working faster and companies have to be more disciplined. And the other key thing is they have to be more agile. So combining that discipline with agility is something, and as you held up your book, let me just do the same. <laughs> so in my new book, Excellence in Execution, we've just launched a one-day seminar called Execution Agility, mm -hmm. which focuses on how you build that agility and the discipline to execute with excellence into an organization. And that supports the key messages from the book that we'll be running globally from the next quarter. And it's the in-house seminar that we're offering. Right, I'll be sure to include that link in my show notes. You know, Thanks. it's interesting you mentioned the half-life of companies out. I wonder what it was for the airline industry in the 1950s versus what it is right now because the airline graveyard keeps growing as well. And it's something I'll, I'll surely look into and get back to you. Uh, to, to sum up, uh, Robin, a couple of personal questions. What's the, what's the best piece of career advice you have received from any of your mentors? <laughs> best career advice. Um, it's something we've actually mentioned, um, which is the detail. So with my mentor, uh, which some may know, which is Ron Kaufman, who has been my mentor for 25 years, mm -hmm. managing the, the details when you're, whether you're meeting somebody, whether you're emailing them, whether it's presenting, whether it's setting up, uh, whether it's preparing, it's being focused about managing those little things, mm -hmm. which is something I've personally instilled into what I do. So that was probably one of the best things I got early on in my career. What's an example of a detail you, you look out for when you're speaking, for example? It, it's the same in terms of the preparation, um, in terms of how you present your material, how the room looks, uh, the collateral that you're using is mm -hmm. everything around you that it represents and looks how it should do. Right, right. And I've, of course, heard you speak and you were kind enough to come speak at our Simply Flying Lab in Singapore in February. One of the things I found really fascinating in your talks was, were the riddles and how everyone got excited and interested in solving all, the, all those riddles which ultimately connected back uh, to strategy implementation and all these big ideas that they were thinking of in the lab. How do they go back and implement them? So ultimately, it's about implementation. And isn't it 80% of strategies that fail to get implemented? Uh, today, it, it's improving a little bit, but still more fail than succeed. We're down at 67%. OK. So and it's improved over since we first did the research in 2002. Then it was 90%. Right. Today, leaders understand it. Therefore, they're getting better at it but yet we still fail two thirds of the time. Right, well, I'm hoping that lots of airlines listen to this interview with you, implement the five tips to change their culture and have a culture of implementation. And guess what? Ultimately, we as customers and travelers have a better flying experience. And thank you for the opportunity to join you. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Robin. All the best for the new book launch. Thank you.